Hello again, folks. This is NixOS number 59, and we're going to do some more ZFS backups. I've already done two videos about these, but this is uh, different because we're going to back up from a remote system, not just a local system, using Syncoid. I uh, highly recommend that you watch this video, although the this left-hand side, this talkie script stuff will be available via a link in the video description. Um, there's going to be some demos. There's a lot of moving parts to this thing. I'm not sure. I don't, you know, you might as well click off now. I'm not sure how it's going to go. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> That'll probably be fine. It'll probably be fine. We'll give it, we'll give it a shot anyway. It might, might be rough going, but I do suggest you watch the video instead of, in, instead of just uh, reading it up to you. Um, so as I mentioned a few months ago, I made a couple other videos about ZFS backups. There's links to them there. And those, I only configured Syncoid, which is a ZFS backup program. This is, this is just about ZFS. This has nothing to do with, you know, non-ZFS backups. Uh, I only configured it to back up a data set, back up and um, make snapshots of a data set uh, that were on the same host as the drive that I was backing up to. So it was all local, no, no remote machines. Since then, I've set things up in such a way that I'm now backing up at least one directory of a remote system, the home directory of a remote system. And... Uh, uh, I go over this in the in the in the other videos, but the source data set and the target data set, in my case, are both encrypted, which is super cool. It's the reason I use ZFS. Uh, this this thing called ZFS and receive, which Syncoid and Sanoid use under the hood. Well, Syncoid uses under the hood. Um, <clears throat> allow you to to uh, back up uh, an encrypted data set without decrypting it. And even when it, it's put on the target, you know, on the, the big USB enclosure I have here, it's encrypted and it, I don't need to unencrypt it. You know, if somebody walks up to my computer, they can't get into it. So it's really, really nice. So in any case, like I said, lots of moving parts here. Uh, you might be able to get the gist of things. Uh, you know, some ZFS knowledge is going to be assumed. So I suggest you watch those other two videos if you're running into problems. So um, prerequisites. The first and most scary is to create a past phraseless SSH public or private key pair. Ooh, ooh, nobody likes past phraseless SSH key pairs. But basically, we just do SSH key gen. Uh, and we do that. I'm going to put this in home Chris M video test dot key like that. And we just, no passphrase, no passphrase again. Now we have home Chris M video test key. We have a video test key and a video test key pub. Fair enough. Um, uh, we're gonna use these files. Uh, we're gonna use one on the target system and one on, on the source system. Uh, in my configuration, I'm going to pull my backups from the re remote machine. So I have, a, I have sort of like a, a backup host, you know, the, 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 it's called ThinkNix512. It's this one here. Uh, is that right? Host name, host name, host good name, host name, ThinkNix512. That's the machine that's, that has my, my big USB enclosure on it with my big drives uh, and a ZFS, um, ZFS, a number of ZFS data sets on it. And it's, I'm going to try to back up into a um, ZFS list. Let's see, B. Yeah, that is, that is the backup set that I, or that is, that is the the pool that I'm going to try to back up into. Um, and so I'm calling that the target, uh, the target machine because it's where the data goes. Um, so in in, our, in my case, think Nix five twelve is the target machine. Uh, we'll pull from the source machine to the target machine. Got it. Got it. Good. Um, so we want to take the backup key we just generated up here. That I called it video test instead of backup, but it's that one. And we want to copy it to um, copy. Um, video test key like that and I want to copy to var lib syncoid like that in your case it would be called backup key I already have a backup key in there so I don't want to destroy it I'm just copying the this thing here and I will pull my 
best phrase in var lib syncoid. Uh, now notice I can't CD this directory as a normal user. So I'm going to sudo uh, just for now and var lib syncoid. Goid. And in here, indeed, we have a video test.key. Um, I think this is necessary. I think we have to chmod it. We, we, you know, it's passphrase, <laughs> world readable um, SSH key. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. It's, it's, it's less bad than it sounds. Uh, but I think we have to say user plus read, uh, oh, other plus read, uh, video test key. And now it should have approximately the right, the right uh, permissions to be readable by our syncoid user, which owns this directory. Um, note that the key can't live anywhere else. Uh, if you want to use the Nix integration of Syncoid, uh, it has to live here. And that's actually a good thing because the folks that have packaged up Syncoid for Nix have done a pretty bang up job of trying to make, trying to, um, make it as secure as possible. And they, th there's a, there's a Syncoid user. There's a bunch of dynamic stuff that happens, but the upshot of the thing is that this directory here that we're in, Varlib Syncoid, um, the syncoid user really can't read anything outside of there. And also, like I showed you, unless I'm root, I can't, I can't get in there. I, I can't cat that file, uh, yeah, backup key. I'm, I'm, un, I'm unable, uh, unable to get to it. So that's, it's a nicety. It's not going to, you know, stop, stop North Korea, but it, it's fine. You know? So if you don't have varlib syncoid on your system, your target system. I think it gets created when you install Syncoid via, you know, NixOS Rebuild or whatever, or it might get created when you try to sync at least one source. I, I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't try this like totally from scratch. You know, I have the system and it's been doing backups for a while now. So I had that directory, but in case it's not there and you need to make it, I doubt you'll need to make it, you know, probably just installing Syncoid will, will do it for you, but there are the, the, uh, permissions for it if you want to make it by yourself owned by the syncoid user wrx for uh the owner so now that we we've put our backup key in a place that the syncoid user can read it our, you know, on, on our target system um we can do sort of do the other side of this now so i i this other system in in the yellow window down here is the system that I am, um, that I am back. This, this is the source system and inside of my next configuration on that system, I have a stanza that looks like this. It says users use backup, blah, 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 blah. But the most important thing here is this authorized keys, keys, and then the contents of video test key pub of this and what that'll do is it'll allow uh a user that tries to get him as backup uh to get in using that sh key that's about it so um so once you rebuild your source system after you do that after you put this stuff in here i'm, I'm going to go into my actual configuration now it's a little more complicated than than what i'm showing over in the left hand window but gotta show it man it's complicated. Uh, here's here's the the configuration that happens to be on the source system for me, like this. And so when I run NixOS Rebuild over here, this is this is just an alias for NixOS Rebuild. This SWNIX thing for NixOS Rebuild switch. Uh, nothing's going to happen because it already happened. I already did this, but that's what you would do. You would, you would put this somewhere in your Nix configuration. Uh, the home is var empty. You know, we don't have a home directory for this user. He's got no particular groups. The only thing he really has is this, is this authorized key. So, um, now at that point, since, since I now have that, the, the private side of that key, in varlib syncoid over here and the public side of that key configured on the source system. Well, I have the private side of the key configured on the target system, uh, public side, 
uh, side of the key configured on the on the source system, uh, I can now uh, should be able to get in via SSH uh, without typing a passphrase. Very scary. Very scary. <clears throat> And the only reason I'm using uh, sudo here is because I can't read that backup key without without sudo. I have to I have to use that. So, <clears throat> do, 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 do. indeed, I am in. I'm in var empty, and I am backup. So, that's the first step to get these two machines talking over SSH and you know doing it in such a way that it uh, um that you don't give away the farm and it's repeatable at least on the source side in the next configuration so um as i mentioned you know i'm I, hopefully i'll show you what i tried to lock it down a little bit more but this is where we are right now password pass pass phraseless ssh key one to the other bob's our uncle so there's one other bit of prerequisite magic we need to do on the source system on the on the system that we want to back up from um we want to give uh uh, our backup user that we just caused to be created over here by swinixing, we want to give him uh, a number of permissions, a uh, number of ZFS permissions, not Unix permissions. And the way we do that is we use the ZFS allow command. Um, let me do this so it's not all red and stuff. So does ZFS allow backup compression, hold, sends. Th this, these are the minimum number of things it takes to use Syncoid to uh, take snapshots on our source system and to uh, send uh, backups to our target system. This is it. There, there, there are no fewer. You might be able to get away with that compression, but I doubt it. Uh, and the, the thing that I actually, the data set that I actually want to back up on this system, on the target system, sorry, on the source system here, this Optinix system, is Nixroot Home. And that is my home directory, uh, CFS list. So I have a home directory on this system uh, that that's the thing I want to back up. I also have a, a root and some other things, but I don't care about those things. I just want to back up the home. So I've actually already um, given that, given those permissions to that person. Let me see, easy if it's allow, next root, home. Yeah, so... User backup, compress, yeah. So, okay. Those are all the prerequisites we need to get set up. Now we are ready to actually make it go. Um, on our target system, on this system up here, uh, we can configure a services syncoid command to pull our Nix root home, the, the source system data set. Uh, that's, that's my home directory stuff. Um, and we can we can configure a syncoid command so that it pulls it from there to our to our target machine, and we can have a, ser a services sanoid um, uh, stanza data set quote unquote keep around historical snapshots of the data set we back up. So you know if if, if we can if if we want to restore from two weeks ago or a month ago or whatever you know that's 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 the way we we do it here, and then. We're going to put those in a data set that I'm backing up to, which for me is called B. Well, it's called B. It'll call, be, be called Optinix Home, but I'm sorry, B Optinix Home. So if I list B, uh, uh, let's see, B, um, I just do a ZFS list. Yeah. So that's where we're going to. It doesn't need to exist. You don't need to prep it or create it or anything like that. It'll be created as a result of what we're doing here. But that's where, where it's going to go. Um, so uh, we can see that I've already done this a little bit. We can see that CFS list T snap that I already have a number of snapshots for Optinix Home. I have a monthly one, a weekly one, a daily one. And these will, this, the, the, the configuration that I'm about to show you is, is what sort of keeps these rotating and, and backed up. So. Uh, all right, so we have service syncoid enable. We need to enable it. Uh, one important thing here is that syncoid needs to run less often than Sanoid does for stupid reasons, but just know that if, if, they, if 
they both run exactly hourly or both run exactly daily. They fight with each other. So it doesn't really matter how often each one runs, whatever you think is reasonable. I have, I have Sinkoid set up to run daily and Sanod run up to run hourly. It's just that Sanod has to run more often than, uh, than Sinkoid does. So, um, and we set it up here so that we, we have a command that we're calling Optinix home and its source is this string here. It says, please get me, uh, the Nix root home data set. I'm going to back that up and I want to back it up from Optinix local which is this machine down here, the yellow one, uh, using the backup user. So that is the, you know, sort of like an SSH, well, slightly like SSH, you know, S copy sort of thing, except the, the, the thing following the colon is a data set, not a file. Uh, and then the target, we want to put it in as B Optinix home. That's what I just showed you over here. And send options WC. This is important if you're using encryption. Uh, w means raw and C means compression. Um, I don't, don't, I, I, if you're not using encryption, it might not be a terrible idea to, to take out W there. Um, but it, it, it shouldn't matter either way, but it might, you know, if you have problems and then we need to turn off strict key host checking, uh, on SSH or it'll just sit there and complain it, it you know. If, if, if it tries to contact uh, from our source machine, sorry, from a target machine to a source machine, and it's the first time, um, it'll s sit there waiting for us to say, yes, this really is the host I want to contact. So we just turn that feature off. We know it is. Right, right. So that's the Syncoid configuration. Once we get that set up, every day it will go out and it will try to contact Optinix to get home directory got it good the other bit of this is sanoid which runs on our target system um and what we're trying to do here is we're saying now that we have b optinix home coming down to us we want to take snapshots of it every so often and we want to keep around snapshots for some period of time and in my case I said seven daily snapshots, four weekly snapshots, 12 monthly snapshots. Bob's my uncle. So, uh, in that's why up here we see, we see Optinix home monthly, weekly, daily here because I have Sanoid set up doing that. Uh, just FYI, this extra args debug thing is super helpful. Uh, try not, and, and common args debug, leave those on. Don't try to do it without them. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of moving parts. You, you need it. Um, and the other bit we have here is because ZFS, so, excuse me, because Syncoid uses some, wants to use some commands that are both on the target and the source. I just added to the system packages of the thing here. So, you know. I don't think it actually doesn't work if these don't exist. It's just less uh, efficient. So, okay, that's on our tagging system. All right, we do all that on our target system. Source system, source system, yellow one, right? Uh, we configure Sanoid, but not Syncoid. Uh, and we configure that to take snapshots every so often and prune our snapshots every so often, but we're only keeping around one daily snapshot, one weekly snapshot, one monthly snapshot. And I think what happens under the hood here, it's been a while, I forget, but I think what happens is that on the targets, uh, on the target side, when we, when we use Syncoid, it copies these snapshots over and it doesn't actually make, right. It doesn't actually make snapshots on our target. Uh, it just prunes the ones that are there already. So it's not, it's not creating snapshots over here. It's just, it's copying over the snapshots that are generated on the, on the source. And then it is, it is filtering them down, you know, keep, keep around seven, four and 12, but we only keep around one per on this side. Um, so we don't use up too much disk space on our small machine. Right. Again, debug, very, very important. Same thing on the source system. Uh, we want to add this stuff to the system packages on the source system because ZFS send and receive uses it. 
So let's see this in, in action here. Uh, I am going to change something such that it runs much more frequently than it normally would. Um, is it in here? No. It's over here. I'm going to have it run every minute. And let's see. That is this machine here. This is our target system. I will run Nixos Rebuild. Switch. Okay. Now I'm going to run Journal Control dash F and see what's happening on our jammy. That is it running. So that's where we ended up before. It says starting to sync with ZFS synchronization from that. That's what that's what we're just working on. There's another syncoid job in here that's the local one that's backing up from this machine's home directory to the USB B exposure, which is this one. They're kind of mixed up together in here. Probably should have shut this one off before I did this, but hopefully we can make it through here. So um da -da -da. started synchronization. This is the one we care about. This is not that one. We don't want that one. We don't care about that one. We care about... Yeah, we care about this one. So, um, this is basically where it starts here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. This, this bit right here. And you can see that it doing a bunch of stuff, doing a bunch of stuff, getting lots of snapshots, uh, estimated transfer size, et cetera, et cetera, send size, incremental. And then it actually does a ZFS send here, which is, you know, the target system sends this command. It says, hey, source system, please execute a ZFS send to me, something like that. Um, and then it prunes some snapshots, uh, that it uses to know when to back up from last and that's it. And it worked. Now it's not gonna work for you. <laughs> this took me forever. Uh, but hopefully with, with my instructions, it'll take you half of forever to get working. Uh, you really have to make sure that your SSH stuff is working and your ZFS permissions are working and all that stuff. But hopefully this gets you further. So. I wanted to talk a little bit about security here. I'm going, to, I'm going to change this so it's not doing this all the time. I want to talk a little bit about security. Um, I don't like past phraseless SSH keys. Um, and it occurred to me that while I was making this video that, ugh, you know, Unix <clears throat> security and the way that it operates kind of sucks, um, particularly for this, because what, what Syncoid wants to do it wants it badly wants to execute sort of arbitrary commands via ssh you know the one side says hey please send me this you know i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you over ssh execute this command called send and i'm gonna i'm gonna execute another command on my, on my side called receive and and whatever but it's not just one command it's like a bunch of commands that it wants to send and there's no really good way to to prevent you know a, a, an arbitrary unix user from from or, or to restrict uh, an arbitrary Unix user to a, a given set of commands. It's just, it's just not something Unix does, you know? I mean, you, you can restrict what people can do through sudo, but we're not using sudo. The guy's got to have a shell on, on, our, on our source system. So he's got to be able to log in and actually, you know, execute commands. But there's no good way to, to say, I only want you to be able to execute these commands, which is kind of shitty. Um, now there is, there is sort of a way, which I'm going to show you, uh, here, uh, on our source system. Uh, let's see. Those profiles. Right. Um, there is a way to force a user over SSH to only be able to execute a single command. And what that command can do, you know, if you write a script 
that command can turn around the the original SSH command, um, uh, you know, the, the, the command that, that the user asked to be executed as a result of running SSH is available to us. And we can write a script that says, okay, let's take a look at that command and see, see if, see if, you know, that that's okay. So I, I tried to do something like that here. Um, and you know, it's just Python script, uh, that says, you know, the SSH original command is what the guy wants to run. Um, and I said, you know, in this case, I said, you know, I noticed that, that Syncoid wanted to be able to run exit echo command Z pool and ZFS. Those are basically the things it wants to be able to run. Uh, and so I say, if, you know, the command starts with that, then sure, why not exec VP it, which just replaces the current process with whatever that is. Um, however, uh, this would require uh, an extraordinary amount of work to be truly secure because you can have in this SH original command thing, you can actually have pipes and you can have ampersands and, and you can have semicolons that execute, you know, the next command, you, you know, all the Unixy stuff that, that's in there. So either you really have to lock it down to like some set of actual, um, commands that, that Syncoid sends. Uh, that's not particularly easy because it does use semicolons and it, you know, it says ZFS destroys this, ZFS destroy that. And it's not, it's not a literal set of commands. It's dynamic. So you can't just sort of paste some, something in there that would match. Um, you have to do a bunch of work. So you could either take the, take the tact of, of doing this just for Syncoid, which I think is probably more reasonable, uh, job. Uh, and probably, you know, if, if I, if I, if I, if I get, you know, fired up about it, maybe it, maybe I'll try to do it and contribute it upstream because it would be super helpful to have this, you know, put this in front of your thing. So you're not, and, and, and also that means that if, if Jim changes Syncoid and changes the command, he can also get changes this, this, this interceptor script so that it would still work. Um, but it's still a bunch of work. So anyway, uh, this is, you know, the way, the way I configured this was to, you know, you can say command equals in front of this thing. And then I just made a derivation for next that just runs, you know, puts a Python script on the file system. Um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's a shot and it's something, it's something. We also have some sort of problematic ZFS permissions on the, on this side, like right now, um, yeah, right now I think, I, I think I gave this backup user permission on the parent of the data set that I'm trying to back up. I don't think it matters. I think it, it would work either way, but, uh, I should probably put it on the data set he's actually trying to back up because he can destroy, um, data sets, which means he can destroy my main data set. That wouldn't be great. Destroy any snapshots. Everything else is pretty, it's pretty mild. You can make snapshots, but destroy is a problem. <laughs> destroy is a problem. So in any case, uh, this was kind of fun. It, it, uh, it, it uh, gave me a better appreciation of how shitty things <laughs> really are <laughs> in the in the world of uh of backups but uh, anyway i hope it hope it helped and thanks for watching